Welcome back, everyone. In today's lecture, we'll continue our discussion on localization and the PLICP algorithm for scan matching. Today, we'll focus on the fast correspondence search component of the PLICP algorithm. If you recall, compared to the vanilla ICP algorithm, there are two main innovations of the PLICP algorithm. The first was the change from using a point-to-point -point metric to a point-to-line metric. And the second improvement, which we'll cover today, are some clever heuristics and coding structures that allow for a faster correspondence search. If you recall, in scan matching, we like to compare how good one transform is compared to another. And to do this, we define the point to line metric. Now, these metrics rely on a correspondence match between the transform points of the current scan and the previous scan. In other words, in order to compute the metric, you need to know which transform point in the current scan corresponds to which point in the previous scan. Now, point to point or the point to line metric both assume that you have already done this step. Here, the best correspondence match is in terms of the Euclidean distance between scan points. And so the principle you the principle behind this is that if two scan points or a scan point and a line segment are close in the in terms of the Euclidean distance, then they are most likely to have measured the same feature. And therefore, if the correct if the transform is correct, the score with respect to the metric will be minimized. The reason why we need a fast correspondence search algorithm is because of the bulk is because the bulk of the computation is actually finding these correspondences. If you recall, once the correspondence have been found, finding the best transform can be solved as an efficient optimization problem, which has a closed form solution for every iteration. A naive implementation of the correspondence search can take on the order of O of n squared, where n is the number of scan points. This can be quite large for the resolution and frequency of a LiDAR unit. So in order to achieve a fast correspondence search, uh, two features are incorporated into the algorithm. The first is a local search with an early termination criteria. And the second is a data structure called the jump table for scan points. First, we'll cover the local search with early termination criteria. Now, the base assumption here is that these features, um, is that the features in the scan point will have a radial ordering. So the search for the correspondence of the i point can begin from the previous i minus one point. Now, what we mean by a radial ordering is that the scans, such as the lighter scans, are made in a fixed direction sequentially. This can be seen in the figure below, where the distances measured by the scan rho j are collected in a fixed radial direction. This makes sense from the perspective of the LIDAR, as LIDARs operate by scanning and measuring the distance in a circular order. What this implies is that the search for a corresponding point can be limited to a neighboring area. Uh, and this is the justification for coming up with a local search with an early termination criteria. The way that the search works is that, each, that for each transform point PI of W, you begin the search from the previous best match and look for the best match in the up and down direction respectively. So in other words, you initialize the search by setting the best match for the previous point as the current match for the P, for PI of W. Now let's start in the up direction. You incrementally search in the order while keeping track of the point that has the best match or the shortest distance to the point PI of W. In this figure, the current best is in the current best in the up direction is maintained as you search in that direction. Now this search could continue until you reach the end of the sequence of scan points. However, this would be very efficient, inefficient. And so instead, we determine a lower bound of the distance from PI of W to the current point being compared. In other words, if we find that the distance to the current point being compared is greater than this lower bound, 
then we terminate the search and return the current best candidate as the correspondence. So in order to do this, let's first define the angle in radians between the current transform point and the angle of the LIDAR of the um, point being compared PFK to be phi of k. We wish to compute this distance between the transform point PI of W and the line connecting the origin of the scan, the reference point of the scan, and the current point P of K. This is because this distance is the shortest distance that can be achieved between PI of W and any point along the line of the kth scan that's at the angle 5K. And hence, this becomes the lower bound, a value that we call the min best, minimum best distance at P of K. Now, V of K will only increase as the search continues, which means that the min best distance will increase. And so if the min best distance is greater than the current best distance, the current minimum distance to the scan point, then there is no reason to continue the search and we can terminate. Now, in order to compute this distance, we use vector geometry similar to what we used in the previous lecture. We first compute the norm of PI of W. And from basic trigonometry, we can compute the min best distance as the sine of phi of k times the norm of PI of W. And so when this min best distance exceeds the current best distance, the search in the up direction can be terminated. Intuitively, this makes sense in that we, if we were to draw some circle centered at PI of W, which has a radius of the current best distance, the fact that the lower bound min best distance exceeds the current best means that locally, no other scan point will exist which is closer than the current best scan point. And so, once the search in the up direction is complete, you repeat in the opposite direction and then choose the minimum of the points found in the up or down direction. The next heuristic or innovation for the fast correspondence search is the jump table. Now, once again, the assumption here is that the scan points will have a radial ordering. Now, what the jump table keeps track of is the index of four different points for each point J in the previous scan. First, it defines the up smaller point, which is the index of the first point, which has a distance, a smaller distance in the up direction compared to your, the current point J, the scan point J. Similarly, it also defines the up bigger point which is the index of the first point which has a bigger distance in the up direction. It also defines the down smaller point, which is the index of the first point which has a smaller distance in the down direction relative to the current point J. And we also define the down bigger point, which is the index of the first point which has a bigger distance in the down direction. So, the algorithm keeps track of these four ind indices for each scan point J in the previous scan. And so the way that you use the table depends on which direction you are moving. For instance, in the up direction, if you search through the scan points and the scans are moving away, in other words, they are increasing relative to the current PI of W, then you jump to the index stored in up smaller. Now, the way to understand this is that the fact that the scans are increasing means that the orientation of the transform point relative to the reference point and the reference surface is as in the figure. Therefore, rather than looking sequentially starting from the current best point P of J, a better candidate matching point when searching in the up direction will be the point at uh, the in point at the index of the up smaller point. Any other point in between will only have a larger distance to PI of W. Conversely, 
if the scans are moving away or decreasing relative to the current PI of W, then the search, search should jump to the up bigger index instead. Similar to before, the fact that the scans are increasing means that the orientation of the reference point, the reference surface, and pi i of w is as the, as the diagram shows below. Therefore, the best candidate that could possibly be a better match is the up bigger point, and any point in between will only have a greater um, will only have a greater distance. Now, for your lab, you need to implement the local search with early termination and the jump table in the get correspondence function of the skeleton code. Uh, we currently provided a naive implementation of the correspondence search without any of these heuristics implemented. And so in the remainder of this lecture, I will go over the pseudocode for the fast correspondence search, which you can find in the original Sensi paper. The function begins with some straightforward initialization and proceeds by first selecting the direction to search either in the up direction or the down direction. The pseudocode then goes through the search in the up direction. This consists of first comparing the current best distance to the current distance you have the early termination check that's executed by computing the lower bound and stopped if the early termination criteria is met. And if it's not, then the jump table is used to find the next candidate point to compare. This is then repeated for the opposite down direction. And finally, the best point is chosen for the current PI of W. And for the next point, the search starts at the best point. So up until now, over the last two lectures, we have discussed the localization problem and gone over one approach for localization, which is scan matching. For scan matching, we focused on the iterative closest point algorithm using the point to line metric and showed the reasoning as to why using the point to line metric results in a faster convergence time when compared to the point to point metric and has less error most of the time. In particular, we discussed how to derive this, the closed form solution for each iteration, which greatly improves the efficiency of the algorithm. Now in this lecture, we covered some heuristics and ideas which allow for a more efficient correspondence search. Now this approach of devising a smarter search is common to all areas of robotics and optimization. For example, important sampling for Monte Carlo search has a similar flavor in terms of ideas. Finally, we weren't able to go into detail about optimization, but I would highly recommend anyone who is more interested in developing autonomous systems and working in robotics to consider obtaining a deeper understanding of convex optimization, either through a course or some other online material. Thank you.